Hey, this episode of the Adventist Millennial Podcast is sponsored by The Haystack. The Haystack is a voice for young adults in the Seventh-day Adventist Church that produces articles, music reviews, videos, and more. What's the and more? Well, you'll have to go to their website to find out. Thehaystack.org. The Haystack. Life. Culture. Theology. Well, here we are. Another week, another podcast. Welcome back to the show, you guys. Um... It's a nice day to be here discussing all of our pressing thoughts and concerns. Uh, Today, I want to talk about two things. One, I want to revisit a thought from last week about God's will for our lives because I've had some light bulbs, inspiration, deep, profound... Just kidding, I just was thinking some other things about it that I didn't talk about, so we'll talk about that. And then, while this is primarily a podcast relating to religion and Adventism specifically, we also all have various aspects of our lives, including our financial lives. Um, And I've never liked the fact that we kind of compartmentalize our religion away from everything else, and so we can talk about everything here, including FIRE, which is Financial Independence and Retiring Early, um, which I think is really cool, and you guys are going to be excited about what I have to say. Okay, but before that, you guys, last week ago today, one week ago today, Hosier dropped his second album. Are you aware of this? Have you been listening to it? I have been listening to Hosier all week. Um, it's a pretty good album. Highly, highly nihilistic as per usual. Um, and also a little bit unnecessarily social justice-y, which I guess I can't fault him for because we give artists a lot of leeway, don't we? Because, because they live in a world of interpreted by feelings rather than interpreted by reason, so can't really complain. But I would say this about the song... Uh, Nina Crad Power. If you haven't heard it, go listen to it. It's a pretty good song, a compelling song, I guess, except for that it's basically a black power song. And let me tell you, Nina Simone also was an incredibly talented and amazing musician, but that didn't make her right about politics either. Um, and she was not a civil rights uh, hero. She was a, an angry, militant black power activist. Um, but like I said, much leeway. She was an excellent pianist, uh, classical trained musicians or classical music informed musicians, I think are always better musicians. And she was truly an amazing musical talent, but doesn't make her right. (laughs) Doesn't make her crying power any more compelling as a philosophical idea. But it's a good song, and it's a good album, so check it out if you are feeling a little heathen today. Uh, and on the recurring nihilism of Hozier's lyrics, I would just say, apparently he was a Quaker growing up, which, you know, I can understand. Becoming nihilistic after being a Quaker, (laughs) I've practically become nihilistic after being an Adventist, and I think you can all relate to that, so, uh, yeah, so go check out Hozier's new album right after this. But before you do that, I I wanted to circle back on a little bit of what I was talking about last week with what is God's will <clears throat> for our lives, where I I came to the conclusion that in my experience, God doesn't prescribe things for our lives. He just kind of says, <laughs> grow as a person, uh, <clears throat> build your character, but what you do within that is kind of up to you. Um, and then I was thinking, you know, a lot of us have stories. A lot of people around us, and including probably many of ourselves, have examples in our lives of God clearly showing us um, a thing to do over another thing to do. Now, whether we were supposed to do that thing, and if we didn't, you know, it would have been bad or something like that, um, is debatable, and I don't think that we necessarily know with a certainty one way or the other, but I do think that it that it's a common experience for us to feel like God is showing us um, the steps to take in our lives that are for our good. Now, that doesn't negate what I was saying last week, I don't think, because here is what I was considering about it. Like kids who are 
as yet underdeveloped and unable to make their own decisions. Sometimes they need guidance. They ask for guidance. <laughs> They're comforted by guidance. And I think that's a lot of times how we are because we aren't confident in our ability to know that we're making good or um, the best choices that we can. Um, and so we need God to show us in tangible ways or... <laughs> you know, close doors in our faces, uh, give us still small voices, things like that, in order for us to feel like we can have confidence in the decisions that we're making. But like children, we should be continuing to grow and mature so that we have those experiences less and less. Maybe this is heretical to you, but uh, this is what I oh, this is what I was thinking. Because let me tell you, I think sometimes our attitude toward God leading us in our lives is a little bit like the kids at Loma Linda Academy. <laughs> and if you went to Loma Linda Academy, sorry, I'm about to call you out super hard, uh, but you deserve it probably. Um, I worked in the cafeteria there at one point in my lifetime, and the academy students would come in with their dollar dollar bills from their doctor parents, <laughs> um, and they would come into the cafeteria and ask for things um to eat and every once in a while it would be like the cafeteria ran out of something okay like a breakfast burrito no more breakfast burritos kid would come up to the counter say i want a breakfast burrito hand me their hundred dollar bills and i would say i'm sorry we are out of breakfast burritos and they would like short circuit and be like uh, 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 uh. but i i want a breakfast burrito i uh, have the dollars you have the breakfast burritos. Give them in my hand here. And I would say, well, yeah, but we, we don't have any. And then they wouldn't know what to do. And then they just couldn't function until I said, but how about you have a regular burrito instead? And then they would be like, is that a thing? A possible thing to do? Okay, let's do that. Um, but I was always struck by, like, their inability to make critical decisions. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's not exclusive to the kids at Loma Linda Academy. Maybe it's all kids that age. But I feel like sometimes this is how we are in our life with God. Um, we, we, uh, we just want to be told what to do. And like the Israelites who were like, give us a king, give us a king, give us a king. And God was like, you guys don't need a king. First of all, I'm here with you. I am your king. And also just do the right things and you won't need to be told what to do by a king. And they were like, give us a king, give us a king. And God was finally like, well, okay, okay, here is your king and you get what you pay for. Um, and so, and so I think maybe sometimes we are like that with God leading in our lives. We like, we, we prod him and beg him so much for like, tell me what I should do. Should I take this job? Should I quit this job? Should I, you know, should I buy the thing? Should I take the loan? Should I go to school? Should I do this? Uh, and God is like, learn, learn, <laughs> learn to decide for yourself. Use the free will that you have. That's why you have it. But if we press him, he's happy to kind of nudge us as we are happy to tell Loma Linda Academy children, there's other food in the world besides the breakfast burrito, which your money can just as easily buy. Uh, so anyway, that's the, an addendum to <laughs> what I was talking about last week. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Now, moving on, if you listened to episode 20 or episode 9, uh, where I talked about, one, getting uh, financially stable, uh, and two, Adventists being successful, or the kind of stigma of success, at least quote-unquote worldly success in the Adventist church, I wanted to talk about this a little bit more because I hear a lot of people my age complaining a lot, all the time, in fact, on Facebook or wherever. I see people complaining about how broke we are and how hard it is to make a living wage and, you know, we've been screwed by the economy and screwed by the system and even if you have a college degree, you can't make enough money and you're drowning in debt and all of this stuff and, um, and yeah, okay, I have sympathy for that, but at the same time, I think there is 
I, I think there's an opportunity here for community and a way to get out of that mindset that really I think is hindering our ability to um, to have the freedom to do the things that we want and to support the things that we want to support and to feel stable enough to to be able to do that. Um, you know how millennials always get this bad rap like millennials are so awful millennials are entitled and they complain and they you know they all want to work remote or they don't want to do anything and they just whine all the time or whatever every other generation has a reason to complain about millennials and even millennials kind of judge <laughs> ourselves like judge other millennials but consider ourselves the exception of our generation people also say things like but millennials are you know the tech doll the first real technology generation and they're gonna do some great things or anyway the point is every generation has grandiose thoughts about itself um or thoughts about itself maybe not grandiose maybe depressing <laughs> but we all have thoughts about ourselves as generations um and i was realizing like Everyone is kind of the same. Every generation thinks it's different than other generations, but kind of we're all a little bit the same. Like, at this stage in our lives uh, that millennials currently are, like, late 20s, early 30s, um, <laughs> did our parents think the same things that we're thinking now when they were our age? Uh, and I was watching this movie from, like, mid-1980s. John Travolta, Jamie Lee Curtis... <laughs> in the movie perfect now the first movie ever that i saw jamie lee curtis in was freaky friday with lindsay lohan so that tells you how old i am but this this movie from the 80s was john travolta was a reporter for the rolling stone um and he was doing a story on some some guy that was that was on trial for like drug trafficking anyway that was a plot b that was the side plot the main plot was that he was doing a story on jamie lee curtis who was an aerobics instructor <laughs> at the epitome of 80s uh fitness center aerobics um and so it was about their romance obviously there's this scene in the movie where he's tr she's really aware of wary of him as a reporter and so he's trying to convince her to let him interview her um and so he's you know spinning eloquence to try to draw her in with his charm and then bait and switch to do the article that he really wanted he was talking about the boomer generation the boomer generation is going to be the generation to change um the landscape of fitness and all this kind of everyone wants to start living a healthy life yada 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 here's the clip so what's the hook of your story hmm. it's not gonna be one of those pieces about how health clubs are turning into the new singles bars is it god forbid <laughs> do you work out yes i do work out when i have time I don't really take it as seriously as you guys do, but I do work out. My dad didn't take it seriously either. He died fat at 40. I'm sorry. I was eight at the time. You know, I knew even then that if he had worked out and didn't smoke so much, he would have lived longer. How old are you? I'm sorry, you don't have to answer that question. Uh, mid to late 20s. Oh, uh, that's interesting. What? Well, most of the people I've been interviewing are about that age. I think when you get our age, you feel the need to uh, keep in shape. Probably no coincidence that the uh, baby boom generation approached 30 at the same time as the exercise boom started in this country, don't you think? Well, you do have a hook. Well, maybe. It's good to talk a story out before you write it. It's really all spitballing at this point. What's that? Tape recorder. I thought maybe we'd uh, exchange some ideas if you don't mind. Do you mind? Yeah. Won't do it. Thanks. I do have some notes that maybe you'll find interesting. Look at this. The baby boomers are leading a physical great awakening comparable to the spiritual great awakenings that have gripped America about every hundred years. Pretty good. So I think people want to take responsibility for themselves instead of leaning on institutions. For instance, the government. I mean, do you think anyone believes that the government will take care of us anymore? Mm. Not since Vietnam or, or uh, Watergate, no. Or uh, big corporations or even uh, doctors. So you have to take care of yourself. A hell of a lot of people out there trying to get in shape, as you well know. I think I feel we've, we've come full circle, almost back to Emersonian America, self-reliance. Yeah, there's something else here. Here, Emerson. Do that which is assigned thee, and thou canst not hope too much or dare too much. 
See, so what could be more American, more all-American, more, more old-fashioned all-American than, than institutions like the Sports Connection? Little capitals of Emersonian America scattered from sea to shining sea. And so, so I listened to that and I was like, man, you know, okay, maybe we're not talking about personal responsibility as a generation anymore and we, we're back to the place where we want the government to take care of us. Um, shots fired. But, uh, but we kind of have similar sentiments. Like, were our parents really that different from us when they were our age? I mean, boomers, I know you're out there. I know you're listening. <laughs> Were you on the same page with John Travolta and Jamie Lee Curtis in 1986? Um, and are we on that page now as our late 20-somethings? Um, our plate now is you guys screwed us by thrashing, <laughs> thrashing the economy. And now we are all poor and we hate our lives and we can't get jobs that we want. And we're overeducated and underpaid. But every generation thinks something about it itself. Um, and so I wanted to speak to what I have been hearing lately about about our, our financial woes. Also, as a side note, can I just say no one, no boomer is allowed to complain about twerking. Um, when they showed five full minutes in this movie, perfect, five full minutes of gratuitous air humping john travolta doing aer aerobics <laughs> literally five minutes do you know how long five minutes of a movie is let me do a calculation here just a second five minutes out of 130 minutes is 0.038 percent so <laughs> so 85 years times 0.038 that's that's like 3.23 years of your life of air humping. B uh, that's five minutes of a movie. Anyway, okay. John Travolta doing aerobics in that movie. If you want to see it, go watch it. Uh, okay, back to, the, back to the point. So several people, so several of you listeners out there have reached out to me individually to comment or share your thoughts or ask questions or whatever. Um, and from the beginning, I've said I want to be able to connect with you guys and I want to figure out a way to build community, but I haven't really figured out how to do that. So, so I have an idea about that, which I will share with you, but I'm in a group on Facebook. Shout out all of you guys, po podcasters of Adventism, uh, Facebook chat has been a, a cool community that I've really enjoyed, even though it's a bunch of socialists. You know who you are as well. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but really for real. Um, <laughs> so this podcasters of Adventism chat on Facebook has, has been an awesome place where we just kind of, you know, do as we do as the first tech generation, just kind of have an ongoing conversation where people throw in their thoughts and, and comments and commentary and different things that we're thinking about or considering or questioning. And, um, and it's been really fun. So I, I kind of want to see if I can create something like that here for those of you who are enjoying this podcast why you're enjoying it i have no idea <laughs> just kidding i'm amazing i want us to be able to connect over what i discuss here because of our shared assumingly shared adventism unless you're not an adventist listening to this in in which case welcome i don't know why you're here but welcome <laughs> um but we all have some kind of a shared experience but i also want us to be able to connect in other areas of our life because we do tend to compartmentalize um, our religion and our our social uh, cultural experiences. Our our all the aspects of our lives are kind of separate. And there are a lot of communities out there online, but but I've found in my own life, like for what I'm about to talk about, financial stuff, um, our Adventist lifestyle does make us weird, and it does make it hard to relate to other communities in a lot of ways because it affects so many aspects of the way that we live that people other people who aren't Adventist don't do. So I created a Slack space. If you don't know what Slack is, you should get it. It's a uh, you. It's like a workspace for teams for like collaboration and communication. Um, it's basically just like a server with different conversation chat channels and stuff. So I created a Slack called Adventist Millennials. Um, if you would like to join it, you're welcome to join it. 
Um, I will leave a link to it in the description of this episode, and I'll probably post a link on, on Facebook and Instagram, too. Um, if you've reached out to me and you're interested, or if you haven't reached out to me and you're interested in just finding other people who know, can identify with your experience and can share about stuff, um, that would be so much fun, I think, because what I've experienced with our little podcasters chat has been fun, and I think we should do more things like that. Um, so I made a channel for culture. There's a general channel, there's a random channel, and there's a channel for theology or religious stuff where we can ask questions or have discussions or whatever. And then there's also the fire channel, which is what I am about to talk about. Now, I've alluded to it multiple times in this episode, so you should not be surprised when I say that. We have a lot of money woes, not only millennials, but Adventists. So if you're an Adventist and a millennial, millennial double whammy on you with your money woes. <laughs> um, and we always have to beg other people for support. The church has to beg its its members for support. Nonprofits have to beg um, also church members for support. Um, and we don't really become wildly successful in business unless you go to ASI, but for the amount of Adventists that there are in the world, the people who are really <laughs> making it are not that, that many. Um, so part of what I want the group to be is a place for people who are interested in becoming more financially independent and want a place to share about that, to strategize, to encourage each other, to sh to share about our progress and our success and our plans. Um, because it's a journey that I've been on since I got out of college and I it's been really fun for, for me and exciting to see the progression. It's kind of like gamifying your finances in a way. <laughs> you make goals and hit them and it's really rewarding and I think more people are interested in it and want to uh, figure out ways to lessen the stress if you have a lot of financial obligations or financial uncertainty that's a lot of stress um and so what what I've found out about is called fire it's the, the people who want to live frugally enough to save more than they spend or at the very least not spend as much as they earn now um the way to reach financial independence is is um in practicality straightforward and simple and anyone can do it the reality is it's hard to be disciplined enough to do it which is why i want to create a community for those of us who are also interested in trying to reach toward this goal um, because there are several things involved in, in reaching financial independence. It's actually super doable. Uh, our economy is doing pretty well in reality right now. <laughs> the stock market has been kind of volatile lately, but it's still on the expected trajectory for history. Um, so anyway, back to the principles of FIRE. One, the first one is get your spending way down. Uh, so you want to be spending like... 25% of your total income or less <laughs> and that sounds really hard for those of us who don't make a lot um, who don't have high income um, or who have debts uh, but that's the other thing one get your spending down which even in a place where like where I am in Southern California cost of living is pretty high I live by myself which so housing is my biggest expense but even even that with one income and living by myself, you can easily have less than $25,000 a year expenses. So anything you make above that, of course, you can save. Or if you have debts, that's the, that's the next step. Pay off your debts. If you don't want to spend a lot of time reading on this, you can go to trusty old A. Ramsey and Financial Peace University, which is a very elementary, um, but it's helpful if you're just getting started. Um, you want to pay off your debt. So, so start with your smallest one because the amount of excitement and uh, encouragement you get from paying off the first one will spur you on to the next one. So start with the smallest one, even if it's not <laughs> the best interest rate or the low, the lowest interest rate, start with the one you can get paid off the quickest and make that your highest priority and get all your debts paid off. If you have student loans, 
which a lot of us do, if you have credit card debt or any whatever you have, get it paid off ASAP. So far we have pay off your debts and get your spending down. Then once you're in that place, once you're once you don't have any debts and once you're spending less than you're earning, the rest of that is savings. And this is the exciting part, you guys, for the financial independence part, which independence means you don't have to work and you don't have to have other people paying you because you have enough money to not have to worry about that. Here's the amazing part. You don't have to have like five million dollars to retire and not have to work anymore. You just have to have enough to live within the 4% safe withdrawal rate. So, if you don't know, here's what that means. Analysts who are much smarter than me have looked at the stock market over years and years and years and calculated that in taking different segments of a pers- uh like a 50-year career or whatever, taking different segments of time um, and plotting if you retired at such and such year, you know, 1930, 1958, 1970, 2008, um, no matter what year you retire in, using different models, if you withdraw 4% of your retirement income, which is invested in hopefully a diverse portfolio, if you withdraw 4%, you won't draw on the principal amount. Um, even if you retire at the economically worst time so like even if you retired like right at the great depression if you if you have enough money in your retirement to withdraw four percent let me say it this way if you have enough money in your retirement to cover your expenses without withdrawing more than four percent you're good to go even if you retire in the worst possible time in history um barring like losing a world war like if you are in germany in the 1940s you know four percent is not gonna cut it but in almost every scenario in every scenario if you're in the united states in every scenario in history um our economy (laughs) has over time grown um so in an average economy the safe withdrawal rate is actually more like five or six percent but 4% 4% is like the, the most conservative, um, worst case scenario protection. What that means is if you get your expenses down, if you don't go crazy spending a lot of money, you can not have as much in your retirement and still withdraw only 4%. So let me do a little quick calculation here. Let's say, for example, your expenses per year are $25,000. If you have $600,000 in the stock market and you withdraw 4% a year, that's $24,000. $600,000 is, to be honest, not that much. Because if you are making, for example, say $17,000 a year, you're spending $25,000 a year on your expenses, then you are saving $45,000 a year in 13 years. 13 years, you'll have $600,000 in the stock market. 13 years. Can you imagine retiring in 13 years? How old am I right now? That's like me retiring when I'm 41. The crazy part is, too, like, okay, let's say, for example, you're making 70 grand a year now. You're spending the same amount, 25,000 bucks a year, and you save for seven years. 45,000 times seven, 315,000 times 4%. That's twelve and a half thousand dollars a year. And you could, like, work part-time or do it, do whatever you want. Um, when you start doing the math and when you start re- being real with yourself about how much money you can not spend, <laughs> um, it gets so much more doable, so much more, uh, attainable, so much more reachable that why wouldn't you do it? Okay, let's say for another scenario, there are two of you because a lot of us here, at least around here in Loma Linda, A lot of people have professional degrees. They're earning a lot more than $70,000 a year. Let's say you're a married couple. Just to be conservative, you're both earning 70 grand a year. That's $140,000 a year. If you're still spending a low amount, okay, let's bump it up to 30 grand a year. $140,000 a year minus 30 grand a year is $110,000. That's, you could be retired in like 10 years, you guys. 10 years. (sighs) Start doing some math. 
Uh, I'll leave some links again if you guys are interested. In fact, if you are interested in doing something like this, if you've done Financial Peace University and you know the basics, if you are started on this journey already, if you're socking away in your retirement already and you want to talk about, you know, your diversified portfolio if you're like i don't know what the frick you're talking about but i don't like having debt and i don't like feeling stressed all the time come on come to the slack channel we'll talk about it we'll kick around ideas we'll we'll figure out a way to become the adventist millennials who are financially independent enough to do the things that we want to do, to do the things that we care about, to support the things that we want to see happen, to be financially supportive of the things that are important to us, and to create a community and to encourage each other and to have fun and tell jokes and share memes and gifts and all that kind of stuff. I mean, look, people talk about generations as a group of people, but at the end of the day, it's just another identity group. Uh, John Travolta and Jamie Lee Curtis may have been super into fitness, but there were plenty of boomers who weren't. Um, and and so uh, we don't have to be defined by what people say about our generation. We don't have to be defined by the prevailing sentiment among people our age. We can do the things that we want to do. We can choose to be disciplined. We can choose to prioritize things like... <laughs> becoming financially independent um i've had a lot of fun on the little tiny tiny slice of my own journey that is slowly inching my way there um but at the very least like hey you pay down a little bit of your debt you get a little bit in your retirement account you know even if you don't retire at 35 and <laughs> never work a day in your life at least you'll be better off when you're 65 than if you hadn't thought about it at all so that's all i'm saying like don't let it be depressing. Get inspired. <laughs> it's so much fun when you start feeling like you're not treading water from paycheck to paycheck. It's inspiring. It's encouraging and you want other people to be able to share that experience because, oh my goodness, we're living in the most decadent society in history with the most possibility for raising income. And if we're not um, if we're not taking advantages of the opportunities that we have, what are we even doing? So yeah, that's what I would say. Um, who knows, on the Slack channel, we all might get super into 80s aerobics and get super fit. Like, who knows what's gonna happen, so come to my Slack channel, hang out, party. It is going to be so much fun if you come. If nobody comes, it'll just be me posting memes into the abyss of the Slack channel where nobody <laughs> is. So come over. If you if you have trouble finding the link, if you don't know how to do links, if you're a, an old person who wants to get involved in the fun but you don't know anything about technology, or if you're one of those millennials who don't know anything about technology, send me an email, shout out your window, and maybe I'll hear you. <laughs> send me an email at adventistmillennial at gmail.com. If you want me to send you the link directly, send me a message on Instagram at SDA Millennial. Tweet me. I will send you the link. Message me on Facebook. I will post the link on Facebook. Come into my Slack channel. Get fired up for fire. Start, uh, start dreaming about how we as Adventist Millennials could be let loose on things that will actually impact lives without being overburdened by our horrible financial situations. Okay, guys, hopefully we can get a little group of people. Even if we just had like five or ten people who were like excited about not just FIRE, which is something I'm excited about, financial independence, but like if we're excited about what's ha what we see happening in Adventist media, if we're excited about things that are happening in our social lives, if we are depressed about what's happening in the world, if we have questions about theology, if we want a place to congregate with other people who might be able to understand, that's another thing. As a side note, in the financial independence community, um, savings rate is important. So I already feel alienated from that community because of my beliefs about tithe, which is automatically 10% of your income goes away from you. Um, that's like the golden rule of no 
in in the community so that's part of why I want to find other people who share my same values where yes it's important to save money yes it's important to to prioritize financial responsibility but also yes it's important to pay my tithe and I'm not going to sacrifice that in order to reach financial independence faster you know that's that's another thing that I would tell you pay your tithe because that crazy kooky uh like witchcraft math of paying 10% actually gives you more at the end of the month how does that work that's how tithe works try it if you're not doing it you should definitely try it it's kind of it's kind of like well like witchcraft like I said I'm excited about this I hope you guys can get excited at least maybe if not financial independence about something else involving this community um because I've talked to several of you and you're all cool and I want to be able to connect you with each other and maybe we can find some friends even though you know I don't really like having friends that much <laughs> just kidding I do kind of um online friends not real life friends <laughs> I want you guys to be inspired as inspired as I feel weirdly enough I feel inspired today join the Adventist Millennials slack space just do it what are you doing right now uh go on your phone open your phone, go to the description of this podcast episode, click the thing, join the thing, sign up for Slack if you don't already have it, or open your Facebook and open Admins Millennial and click the thing and do the thing with the thing and come and have fun, okay? That's all I'm asking. Um, <laughs> and I will see you guys next week.